Happy 4th of July! As you celebrate America's 249th birthday and enjoy the day of festivities and sweltering heat, consider this. Extreme weather and the science of weather forecasting is as American as apple pie. Since the early days of the American Republic, our fear and fascination for the untamed skies has evolved alongside American life influencing aspects of our politics and socioeconomics. Although European scholars in the 18th century were generally more advanced in the sciences, they were not used to the frequency and intensity of the storms on the North American continent. Thunderstorms and tornadoes as a regular, almost daily occurrence was unheard of for the Europeans, not to mention the hurricanes that would frequent the shores of the Western Atlantic. Believe it or not, many of our founding fathers were not just brilliant political thinkers, but they were also weather nerds at heart. Benjamin Franklin, most famous for his crazy electricity experiments, including flying a kite during a thunderstorm, the OG of don't do this at home, led him to invent the lightning rod and the battery. He was also obsessed with tornadoes and water spouts, spontaneously chasing down a whirlwind with his son on horseback, making him America's first tornado chaser. I actually have here in my personal collection of antique books, Benjamin Franklin's original scientific works published in 1806, first edition, and you can see his hand-drawn schematic of a water spout, or a tornado over water. Thomas Jefferson was also a weather nerd. In fact, for over five years, he kept a thermometer in his pocket and religiously took daily temperature observations. In his own words, quote, I make my daily observations as early as possible in the morning and again about four o'clock in the afternoon, these generally showing the maxima of cold and heat in the course of 24 hours, end quote. Even on the 4th of July, 1776, when he was a tad bit busy, Jefferson still took temperature observations. And thanks to him, we now know that the so-called sweltering day of the signing of our Declaration of Independence was really, by today's standards, just a balmy, almost cool 76 degrees in Philadelphia. Jefferson believed the future economic prosperity of America would be deeply tied to our understanding of our own weather, and he envisioned a weather observation network on a national scale that would be funded by the federal government, beginning with the distribution of weather instruments to observers in each county within each state. This dream led to the establishment of the Smithsonian Institute in 1846, which took as its first project the linking of weather observers around the country via telegraph lines. Americans went to visit the Smithsonian Great Hall to see a real-time weather map for the first time in history. In 1870, the U.S. Army Signal Corps was established as our first National Weather Service, and in 1890, those meteorological responsibilities were transferred to the civilian U.S. Weather Bureau before becoming the U.S. National Weather Service in 1970. And today, the United States leads the world in weather science and forecasting. So as you enjoy the day with friends and fireworks, perhaps dodging some summertime thunderstorms, Remember that the Weather Enterprise is one of the most hallowed of American institutions and goes back to the birth of our nation.